I never expected my grandmother's death to spark a war, but looking back, I should have seen it coming. The letter arrived three days after we buried her, its crisp white envelope carrying her familiar, elegant handwriting. My name, Callum. Written in the careful loops and swirls, I'd watched her perfect over countless Sunday afternoons in her garden. My name is Cal, and until last week, I was just the family disappointment, the Hawthorne who chose dirt and plants over our prestigious restaurant legacy. Now I'm the unexpected heir to my grandmother's estate, and my entire family has lost their minds. I stood in Grandma Mabel's garden, her letter trembling in my hands as the evening sun cast long shadows across her prized rose bushes. The same roses she'd taught me to tend when I was just a kid with scraped knees and too many questions. You can't be serious. My brother Jackson's voice crackled through my phone's speaker. The house? The whole property? What about the restaurant? The letter's pretty clear, I said, scanning the words again. She left everything to me, Jax. The house, the garden, even her savings. This is bullshit, Cal, and you know it. His voice had that edge to it. The one that always preceded an explosion. Dad's already talking to lawyers. You need to do the right thing here. I watched a monarch butterfly land on one of Mabel's white roses. The right thing according to who? Dad. You. According to the family. That property could save the restaurant. We're struggling, Cal. You know this. The butterfly took flight, and I followed its path until it disappeared over the garden wall. Maybe if you and Dad hadn't sunk all that money into that ridiculous expansion. Don't. Jackson cut me off. Don't you dare criticize what you abandoned. Some of us actually stuck around to carry on the family legacy. I laughed, but there wasn't any humor in it. Funny how the only legacy that matters is the one you chose. Cal. A new voice joined the conversation, Bianca Jackson's fiancé. Be reasonable. Your grandmother wouldn't have wanted to cause all this drama. She loved the restaurant too. Did she? I walked over to the greenhouse where Mabel and I had spent countless hours. Because according to this letter, she wanted me to have everything specifically to prevent it from being sold off to save the restaurant. The silence on the other end was deafening. Listen, Bianca's voice turned honey-sweet. Why don't you come over for dinner tonight? We can discuss this as a family. Your mother's making your favorite pasta. I touched the greenhouse door, remembering how Mabel would always say, Trust the garden, Cal. It never lies. Unlike people who could wrap manipulation in the guise of family dinner. Thanks, but I have plans. I didn't, but they didn't need to know that. I need to start sorting through grandma's things. Cal. Jackson started, but I ended the call. Inside the greenhouse, everything was exactly as Mabel had left it. Her gardening gloves still draped over her favorite wooden chair, her tools arranged with military precision on the workbench. I unfolded her letter again, reading the last paragraph that had set this whole mess in motion. My dearest Cal, I know this decision won't be popular, but you're the only one who truly understands what I've built here. This garden isn't just plants and soil. It's a testament to choosing your own path, even when others can't understand it. Don't let them destroy it. And Cal, check behind the loose brick in the greenhouse's north wall. There's something else you need to see. I looked up at the north wall, where generations of ivy had made their home. Somewhere behind those leaves was another piece of Mabel's puzzle, and something told me it would only add fuel to this family fire. My phone buzzed again, a text from my mother this time. Your father is very disappointed. Please don't make this harder than it needs to be. I turned off my phone and started examining the wall. Whatever Mabel had hidden, I needed to find it before anyone else did. Because one thing was becoming crystal clear, this inheritance wasn't just about a house and garden. It was about to expose every crack in our family's carefully maintained facade. The doorbell chimed just as I was prying at the loose brick in the greenhouse. Of course they wouldn't wait for an invitation. Through the glass walls, I could see my parents' silhouettes approaching, my mother's pearls catching the late afternoon light. I quickly smoothed my dirt-covered hands on my jeans and met them at the garden path. My father's disapproving gaze swept over my casual attire, while my mother clutched her designer handbag like a shield. Callum, my father said, using my full name, never a good sign. We need to discuss this situation like adults. I was just working in the greenhouse, I said, gesturing to my clothes. Let me clean up and... Playing in the dirt again? My mother's smile was tight. Some things never change. We settled in Mabel's kitchen, where the ghost of countless Sunday dinners hung in the air. My mother immediately began straightening things, rearranging the fruit bowl as if its slightly askew position personally offended her. The restaurant's in trouble, Cal. 
my father began, his voice carrying that familiar weight of expectation. Real trouble. Your brother's been working himself to death trying to keep it afloat. I heard about the expansion problems, I said, keeping my voice neutral. The new location isn't performing well? Don't pretend you care now, my father snapped. You walked away from all that responsibility years ago. Left it all on Jackson's shoulders. My mother touched his arm. Everett, please. We're here to talk solutions. She turned to me, her expression softening in that calculated way I knew too well. Sweetheart, this house. It's just too much for one person. And the maintenance costs alone. I can manage, I said firmly. Grandma Mabel taught me everything about maintaining the property. Ah yes, all those hours wasted in that garden when you should have been learning the business, my father muttered. A memory surfaced, 16-year-old me, proudly showing my father the herb garden I'd planted for the restaurant's kitchen. His dismissive wave as he walked away, saying real men don't play in the dirt. I pushed the memory aside. The property's value could save everything, my mother pressed on. The restaurant, our family's legacy. What about grandma's legacy? I challenged. This garden was her life's work. It's a hobby, Callum. The restaurant is our family's foundation. My phone buzzed, a text from Tessa. Don't let them bulldoze you. Remember what Mabel always said about standing your ground. I'm not selling, I said, standing up. Grandma left this place to me for a reason. My father's face darkened. You ungrateful. Everett, my mother interrupted, her voice honey-sweet again. Cal, darling, at least look at the offer we've prepared. It's very generous. She pulled out an envelope from her bag, sliding it across the kitchen table. I didn't touch it. This isn't about money, I said. This is about respecting grandma's wishes. Respect? My father's laugh was harsh. Where was your respect when you abandoned your family obligations? When you left your brother to shoulder everything alone? I didn't abandon anything. I shot back. I chose a different path. Grandma understood that. Your grandmother. My mother hesitated, exchanging a look with my father. She wasn't thinking clearly near the end. Perhaps if we contest the will. Get out. The words came out quiet but firm. Excuse me. My father's face reddened. I said get out. Both of you. And take your offer with you. My mother's face crumpled in that practiced way that used to make me cave instantly. Cal, please. Now. They left, my father's angry muttering mixing with my mother's theatrical sniffles. As their car pulled away, I noticed something had fallen from my mother's bag. A small notebook I recognized as Grandma Mabel's garden journal. Flipping it open, I found recent entries I'd never seen before, including one dated just weeks before her death. The words made my blood run cold. They're planning something. Must protect Cal. Must hide the truth about. The rest of the page was torn out. I looked back toward the greenhouse where the loose brick waited. Whatever Mabel had hidden, I needed to find it fast. Because now I knew, this wasn't just about the inheritance anymore. There was something else, something my family desperately wanted to keep buried. I was still trying to make sense of Mabel's torn journal entry when Tessa called. You need to get down to the county clerk's office. Now. What? Why? Because your brother and his fiancée just walked in with a stack of papers, and I overheard them talking about property transfers. Tessa worked as a legal secretary there. Something's not right, Cal. Twenty minutes later, I was speed-walking through the courthouse's marble halls, my muddy boots leaving tracks on the polished floor. I rounded the corner just in time to see Bianca at the clerk's window, sliding documents across the counter with perfectly manicured hands. I need to see those papers, I said, stepping up beside her. Bianca's smile didn't waver, but her eyes went cold. Cal, what a surprise. Family business, you know how it is. Exactly. Which is why I need to see what you're filing. The clerk, an older woman with reading glasses perched on her nose, looked between us uncertainly. Sir, I. Those documents concern my grandmother's property, I said firmly. I'm the legal owner. Actually, Jackson's voice came from behind me. That's what we're here to correct. He looked exhausted, dark circles under his eyes, but his jaw was set with determination. The will was never properly executed. We have proof. Proof? I laughed. What proof? Grandma Mabel wasn't competent when she made those changes, Bianca said smoothly. We have medical documentation. The clerk frowned. I'll need to verify. Here. Bianca produced another document with a flourish. Signed by her doctor. I snatched the paper before anyone could stop me. The signature at the bottom made my stomach drop, Dr. James Rivers. Bianca's father. This is fraud, I said my voice shaking. Your father never treated grandma. He consulted on her case. 
Bianca replied. And as a respected neurologist, his opinion carries weight. Mabel was sharp as a tack until the day she died. I snapped. Everyone knew that. Did they? Jackson stepped closer. Or did you just see what you wanted to see? Face it, Cal. She wasn't thinking clearly when she cut everyone else out. She didn't cut anyone out. She made a choice. A choice you manipulated her into making, Bianca said, her voice dripping with false sympathy. All those hours in the garden, playing the devoted grandson while the rest of the family actually worked. Don't you dare. What's going on here? A new voice cut through the tension. Martin Chun, the family's longtime lawyer, stood in the doorway, briefcase in hand. Martin, Jackson started. We were just filing fraudulent documents, it appears. Martin stepped forward, adjusting his glasses. I was Mabel's attorney for 30 years. I supervised the execution of her will, which was witnessed by two independent parties. She was completely competent. Bianca's smile finally cracked. This isn't your concern. Actually, it is. Martin turned to the clerk. Please note that any attempts to transfer this property without proper authority could constitute legal fraud. I'll be filing an injunction immediately. The clerk quickly gathered the papers, stamping them with a large red suspended mark. Jackson grabbed my arm as I turned to leave. You're destroying this family. I looked at his hand, then into his eyes. No, Jax. You're doing that all on your own. Back in Mabel's garden, I finally found the loose brick and the envelope hidden behind it. Inside was a USB drive and another note. The truth about the restaurant's finances. Keep this safe. They'll try anything to hide what really happened to the money. My phone buzzed, a text from Bianca. This isn't over. You have no idea what you're up against. I looked at the USB drive in my hand, then at the garden where Mabel had taught me that growth sometimes requires cutting away the dead parts to save the whole. She'd known this was coming. She'd prepared for it. Game on, I whispered, pocketing the drive. Because now I understood. This wasn't just about saving her garden anymore. This was about exposing whatever rot had taken root in my family's foundation, no matter the cost. I started toward the house, already planning my next move. Behind me, storm clouds gathered over the garden, promising rain. Perfect weather for unearthing buried secrets. The email from Evergreen Landscapes arrived while I was reviewing the files on Mabel's USB drive. A job offer. Not just any job, but the kind that could define a career. Lead designer for their West Coast division, complete with a six-figure salary and creative control over major projects. The catch. I'd have to move to Seattle. Leave the garden. Leave everything. I was still staring at the screen when Tessa showed up with coffee and a determined look in her eyes. You're brooding, she said, setting a cup beside me. I can smell it from the driveway. Look at this. I turned the laptop toward her, then gestured at the scattered financial documents surrounding it. And all this. The restaurant's been hemorrhaging money for years, but not because of bad business. Tessa leaned in, scanning the numbers. Someone's been cooking the books? More like feeding them steroids. The expansion money? Most of it disappeared into offshore accounts. I rubbed my eyes. Jackson's signature is all over these transfers, but the patterns, they're too sophisticated for him. Bianca, Tessa said quietly. She worked in corporate finance before getting engaged to Jackson. My phone buzzed, another text from Martin Chin. Meeting tomorrow. Bring the evidence. And Cal, watch your back. The doorbell rang, making us both jump. Through the window, I spotted a sleek black car I didn't recognize. Mr. Hawthorne? A woman in a crisp suit stood at the door, flanked by two men carrying briefcases. I'm Rebecca Walsh, representing Evergreen Landscapes. We were in the area and thought we'd discuss our offer in person. My stomach dropped. No one just happens to be in the area with a full legal team. This isn't a good time. Actually, she stepped forward, it's the perfect time, especially given your current family situation. The way she said it made my skin crawl. In the kitchen, Tessa was quickly gathering the scattered documents. How did you know about that? Rebecca smiled. We do our homework, Mr. Hawthorne. We also know about the attempted property transfer today. You're fighting a losing battle here. We're offering you an exit strategy. The garden can be maintained by professionals. We'll even include it in your contract. But you need to decide quickly. She checked her watch. Before things get messy, eh? What does that mean? It means your brother's fiancé has friends in high places. The kind who can make fraud allegations stick, regardless of truth. The kind who can ensure you never work in this industry again. My hands clenched. Are you threatening me? I'm offering you protection. And an opportunity. She placed her card on the counter. 
You have 24 hours. Choose wisely. After they left, Tessa found me in the greenhouse, aggressively pruning Mabel's roses. Cal, stop. You're butchering them. I looked down at the mangled stems. They knew about the property transfer attempt. Hours after it happened. How? Because this was never just about the garden. Tessa picked up one of the fallen roses. Think about it. The restaurant's money laundering, Bianca's connections, this sudden job offer. They're trying to get you out of the way. But why? What's so important about this property? Tessa's eyes widened as she looked past me. Cal, the zoning maps in Mabel's files. Did you check them? I hadn't. We rushed back to the laptop, pulling up the documents. There it was, a proposed rezoning plan for the entire neighborhood, with Mabel's property at its center. Prime location for a massive commercial development. This is what they're after, I whispered. The garden's just collateral damage. My phone buzzed again, Jackson. Take the job offer, Cal. Please. While you still can. For the first time, I heard real fear in my brother's message. Whatever was happening, he was in deep. Maybe too deep. The rose in Tessa's hand had left a trail of petals on the floor. Red drops like blood, marking a path I had to choose. Run toward safety or stay and fight, knowing it might cost me everything. Mabel's voice echoed in my memory. Sometimes the hardest growth comes from standing your ground. I picked up Rebecca's card and slowly tore it in half. Call Martin, I told Tessa. Tell him to bring everything he has tomorrow. It's time to prune the family tree. Martin Chen's office felt too small for the weight of what we were discussing. The financial records from Mabel's USB drive were spread across his desk like a paper trail of betrayal, each document adding another layer to the conspiracy. They're planning to demolish the entire historic district, Martin said, adjusting his glasses. Your grandmother's property is the keystone. Without it, their development plans fall apart. And the restaurant? I asked, though I already knew the answer. A front. They've been laundering money through it for years. Your brother's signature is on everything, but, Martin hesitated. But what? The patterns match other cases I've seen. Cases involving the Rivers family's development company. My phone buzzed, a text from Jackson. Need to talk. Alone. Please. I showed Martin the message. He shook his head. Don't go. It's too risky. But I was already standing. He's still my brother. The restaurant was closed when I arrived, but the lights were on. Through the window, I could see Jackson sitting at the bar, looking older than his 34 years. You shouldn't have come, he said as I walked in. But I'm glad you did. Start talking. He poured two whiskeys, sliding one toward me. I never wanted any of this. The restaurant, the expansion, the development deals, it was all Dad and Bianca. I just wanted. To make them proud? He laughed bitterly. To survive. You got out, Cal. You had the courage to walk away. I got trapped. So tell the truth. Help me stop them. I can't. His hands shook as he reached for his glass. Bianca's father. He doesn't just destroy businesses, Cal. He destroys lives. The front door chimed. Bianca walked in, followed by my father and two men I didn't recognize. Well, isn't this touching? Bianca's smile was sharp. The prodigal brothers reunited at last. You set me up, I said to Jackson. He couldn't meet my eyes. Nothing personal, one of the men said, moving to block the exit. Just business. My father stepped forward. Sign the papers, Cal. Transfer the property. We can all walk away from this. Walk away. I laughed. Like you walked away from Grandma Mabel when she refused to sell? Is that why she died so suddenly? The room went silent. Jackson's face drained of color. Careful little brother, Bianca warned. Some accusations can't be taken back. Like money laundering? Or fraud? I pulled out my phone, showing them the screen. Everything you just said is being recorded. And live streamed to Tessa. The bigger man started forward, but Bianca held up her hand. You're bluffing. Check your phones, I said. It should be hitting social media right about. Now. They all reached for their phones. In the chaos, I edged toward the door. You idiot, my father snarled. You'll destroy everything. No, I said. You did that yourself. I'm just pruning away the rot. I made it outside just as police sirens started wailing in the distance. Tessa was waiting in her car around the corner, engine running. Did you get it? I asked as I jumped in. She held up her phone, grinning. Every word. The police and FBI are on their way. Martin's meeting us at the station. As we drove away, I watched the restaurant shrink in the rearview mirror. The place that had imprisoned my brother and corrupted my family, now about to become a crime scene. My phone buzzed one last time, a message from an unknown number. Your grandmother would be proud. But this isn't over. M. 
I stared at the message, wondering if it was from Martin, or someone else. Because despite everything we'd just exposed, something told me we'd only scratched the surface of what Mabel had discovered. You okay? Tessa asked. I thought about Jackson's haunted eyes, my father's rage, and Bianca's cold smile. About the garden waiting at home, where tomorrow I'd plant new seeds in soil enriched by everything that had died before. No, I said honestly. But I will be. The sirens grew louder behind us, their wail mixing with the night air like justice finally breaking free of its chains. Sometimes I realized revenge doesn't taste like victory. Sometimes it tastes like survival. The wedding invitation arrived exactly one month after my father's arrest. Cream-colored paper with gold embossing, like nothing was wrong. Like our family hadn't just imploded in a scandal that made headlines across three states. You're not actually going, Tessa said, watching me turn the invitation over in my hands. We were sitting in Mabel's kitchen, where the morning light still couldn't chase away the shadows of recent events. Jackson posted bail for Dad, I said. Used everything he had left. That's not an answer. I traced the embossed letters. Despite everything, the fraud charges, the ongoing investigation, the revelations about Mabel's death, Jackson and Bianca were moving forward with their wedding. At the restaurant, of all places, my phone buzzed with a text from my mother. He's your father, Cal. Whatever you think he did, he doesn't deserve this. Another message followed. Jackson needs his brother there. Please don't make this harder. I laughed bitterly. Make this harder? They tried to frame me for fraud, threatened me with thugs, and possibly. I couldn't finish the sentence about Mabel. The investigation was still ongoing, but the evidence pointed to her death being far from natural. Which is exactly why you shouldn't go, Tessa insisted. The doorbell rang. Through the window, I saw Martin Chen's car in the driveway. It's not good, he said as soon as I let him in. The Rivers family is pushing back hard. Their lawyers are trying to discredit the evidence, claiming it was obtained illegally. But the live stream? They're saying it was edited, manipulated. Martin looked exhausted. And Jackson? He's changed his statement. Says you set them up, that you're the one who orchestrated everything. The kitchen suddenly felt too small. Through the window, I could see Mabel's garden, where the roses she'd loved so much were beginning to wilt. Why would he do that? Because I had to. Jackson's voice came from the doorway. None of us had heard him come in. He looked terrible, thin pale with dark circles under his eyes. They have mom, Cal. What? She's resting at Bianca's family estate. They're calling it a nervous breakdown, but... He swallowed hard. I had to change my statement. I had to protect her. The pieces clicked into place. The wedding wasn't a celebration. It was a show of force. A message that the Rivers family was still in control. The invitation, I said slowly. It's a trap, isn't it? Jackson wouldn't meet my eyes. Just come to the wedding, Cal. Please. Make a speech. Wish us well. Show everyone that the family drama was overblown. Maybe then. Maybe then what? They'll let mom go. They'll forget about destroying everything Mabel built. They'll let us live, Jackson whispered. After he left, I stood in the garden, surrounded by dying roses. Everything Mabel had created, everything she'd fought to protect, was slipping away. And now I had to choose between justice for her death and my mother's safety. There might be another way, Martin said, joining me outside. But it's risky, and you'd have to trust me completely. I looked at the wilting garden, remembering Mabel's words about growth requiring sacrifice, about how sometimes you had to cut away what you love to save what matters most. Whatever it takes, I said. My phone buzzed one final time, a message from Bianca, looking forward to having the whole family together again. Don't forget to wear black. It's a formal affair after all. The threat wasn't even subtle anymore. Wear black like we're all attending a funeral. Maybe we were. I picked up a dead rose, its petals crumbling in my hand. Tell me the plan, Martin, and then help me find a suit. Because sometimes, to save what you love, you have to walk straight into the dragon's lair. Even if you know you might not walk back out. Tessa touched my arm. Cal. I know. I said, watching the rose petals scatter in the wind. But Mabel taught me that every garden needs pruning sometimes. Even if it means cutting all the way down to the roots. The restaurant gleamed like a funeral parlor, all black ties and forced smiles. I adjusted my dark suit the same one I'd worn to Mabel's funeral, and walked into the lion's den. Bianca had transformed the place, replacing its warm family atmosphere with cold elegance. Black roses everywhere, their thorns prominently displayed. A message just for me. Cal. My mother's voice trembled as she approached, 
flanked by two of Bianca's cousins, men with hard eyes and concealed weapons. You came. Her hands shook as she reached for me, and I saw the faint bruising around her wrist. My blood boiled, but I kept my face neutral. Martin's plan required patience. Wouldn't miss it, I said, loud enough for nearby guests to hear. Where's the happy couple? Making an entrance, of course. Mayor Davidson appeared beside me, champagne in hand. Though I must say, I'm more interested in your work, Cal. That community garden project of yours has everyone talking. Bianca materialized before I could respond, resplendent in white. Mayor Davidson, I'm so glad you could make it. Though perhaps we should discuss the development proposal, rather than gardening. Actually, the mayor said, I've been meaning to talk to you about that. Seems there are some irregularities in the paperwork. A commotion near the entrance cut him off. Jackson burst in, his face ashen. The FBI. There. The doors flew open. Agents poured in, led by Martin Chun, not just a lawyer, but a federal investigator who'd been building this case for years. Nobody move. Martin's voice boomed. We have warrants for multiple arrests. Bianca's smile turned razor sharp. This is a private event. Whatever you think you have. We have everything, I said quietly. The real estate fraud, the money laundering, the offshore accounts. And Mabel's autopsy results. Her composure cracked. You're bluffing. The garden soil, Bianca. Did you know Mabel tested it regularly? Kept records of every chemical change. I stepped closer. Including the poison that showed up three days before she died. One of Bianca's cousins reached inside his jacket. Three agents immediately drew weapons. It's over, Martin announced. Bianca Rivers, Everett Hawthorne, you're under arrest for conspiracy, fraud and first-degree murder. My father, who'd been silent until now, lunged for me. You ungrateful. Jackson caught him, surprising everyone. Stop, Dad. Just. Stop. The mayor watched in shock as agents led Bianca away. My God, I had no idea. That's why they wanted the garden gone. I said. It held the evidence. Mabel knew what they were doing, so they killed her. But she'd already prepared her revenge. The inheritance, Jackson whispered. She left it to you because, because I was the only one who would understand the garden's secrets. I touched one of the black roses. She taught me that every plant tells a story if you know how to read it. As the chaos unfolded, my mother collapsed into my arms, finally free from her captors. I'm so sorry, Cal. We should have listened. Mrs. Hawthorne, Martin interrupted gently. We'll need your statement about your detention at the Rivers estate. I watched them lead my father away in handcuffs, saw Bianca's mask of sophistication crumble as agents read her rights. The restaurant, the source of so much family strife, would likely be seized as evidence. Jackson stood alone by the altar, his world imploding. What happens now? Now! I looked at the black roses, thinking of Mabel's garden waiting at home. Now we start over. Plant something new. Together, he sounded like the brother I'd once known, before ambition and greed poisoned everything. Maybe, if you're willing to get your hands dirty. The mayor cleared his throat. Speaking of new growth, Cal, I'd love to discuss expanding your community garden project. The city could use more of your expertise. Outside, police lights painted the night in red and blue. Inside, among the wreckage of what was supposed to be a wedding, I felt Mabel's presence. She'd known it would end this way not with a celebration of love, but with justice finally blooming through the cracks of our broken family. I loosened my black tie. Tomorrow, I'd plant white roses in the garden. But tonight, there was one more truth to unearth. One year later, I stood in Mabel's garden, my garden now, watching Jackson struggle with a particularly stubborn root. His prison pale skin was slowly gaining color under the summer sun. You're doing it wrong, I said kneeling beside him. Here, like this. I demonstrated the proper angle, remembering Mabel teaching me the same lesson years ago. Three months into his community service, and my brother was finally learning the difference between weeds and wildflowers. The judge had been surprisingly poetic in her sentencing. Help restore what his actions had helped destroy. The mayor called again, Tessa said, appearing with three glasses of lemonade. The community garden network is ready to expand to the next district. I nodded, watching a monarch butterfly land on one of Mabel's white roses, the ones I'd replanted after the wedding that never was. The restaurant was gone now, converted into the city's first urban farming education center. Sometimes karma has a green thumb. Mom's therapy is going well, Jackson said quietly, accepting the lemonade. She's talking about volunteering at the center, teaching kids about herbs and cooking. Our father's trial had broken something in her 
but like the garden after winter, she was slowly coming back to life. Some plants need severe pruning to grow back stronger. Found something else too, Jackson added, pulling a weathered envelope from his pocket. Behind the old restaurant's wine cellar wall during demolition. It's from Mabel. My hands trembled as I opened it. The paper was old, but the words were clear. My dearest boys, if you're reading this, then everything has happened as I feared it might. But remember, even the hardest soil can nurture new growth, if you're willing to work it together. There's more, Jackson said, his voice thick. Look at the date. The letter was written the day before she died. She'd known what was coming, had planted the seeds of justice even in her final hours. Cal. My mother's voice came from the garden path. She looked smaller now, humbler, but her eyes were clear. The Heritage Rose Society called. They want to register Mabel's white hybrid officially. Did they say what they'll name it? She smiled softly. They're calling it Mabel's Truth. I looked around at what we'd built from the ashes of our family's implosion. The garden had expanded, now feeding three local food banks. The education center was thriving. Even Bianca's father's development company had crumbled under federal investigation. You know what's weird? Jackson said, finally defeating the stubborn root. I always thought the restaurant was our legacy. But Mabel knew better. She saw what really needed to grow. A familiar voice seemed to whisper in the breeze. Trust the garden, Cal. It never lies. There's something else, Tessa said, holding up her tablet. Remember that mysterious, M text you got? Martin finally traced it. It wasn't from him. Then who? Margaret Rivers. Bianca's grandmother. Turns out she and Mabel were friends in college. She's been feeding information to the FBI for years, trying to stop her own family's corruption. I thought about karma again, about how the truth finds its way to the surface like a determined seedling pushing through concrete. The garden needs a new section, I decided. Something to mark everything that's happened. Any ideas? Jackson stood, brushing dirt from his knees. What about a maze? But instead of walls, we use flowering vines. Something that looks complicated from the outside, but actually leads to something simple. Like truth, our mother added softly. I picked up my gardening tools, Mabel's old ones that still fit my hands perfectly. Better get started then. These things take time to grow. As we worked together under the summer sun, I realized that revenge, like gardening, isn't about destruction. It's about clearing space for something better to grow. Mabel had taught me that, in her own way, through every seed we'd planted together. The butterfly took flight, rising above the garden where our family was slowly, steadily, putting down new roots. Different from the ones we'd had before, but stronger for having weathered the storm. Sometimes the best revenge is simply growing beyond what others thought possible.